Hi, my name is Devin Walker, and this is my video analysis of Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, to start, I just thought that this was one of the most difficult stories that I have ever read. Um, I am an avid reader. I really love reading, and especially fiction. Um, but when I read this book, I guess I didn't anticipate the the struggle that I would have with it, considering that I... I loved reading it because it was very well written, but at the same time I felt horrible <laughs> about reading it. I um I felt like I should be praying or something <laughs> during it because it was it was very um intense, I think. And it took me incredibly long to read this book. Um I would read a section and have to reread it, and it was just it's just not how I normally read books. Um I also had to do a lot of um, outside looking up to clarify things, um, at, it was just, it was a, it was a journey, I would have to say. Um, at first I was quite upset that I would have to read this book once I found out what it was actually about, but, um, in the end I really actually enjoyed it and I would actually probably read it again. Um, probably better prepare myself for this journey though. <laughs> um, overall when I'm reading this book, a few things really um, stood out to me. One of the things being that um, the characters in itself seem to be very in-depth in a way that um, I really appreciate and the way that they are described is something that I really actually loved about the book. Um, the three main characters that I'm going to go over today are um, Humbert and Humbert, which is the main character who falls in love with his Lolita. Um, he has an obsession with the Nymphets, which are from 9 to 12 um, girls, where he finds them incredibly attractive and just has this drawing to them that is, I mean, he's a pedophile, so that's what that is. Um, and then I I want to look into Lolita as well, um, Dolores Hayes, who is the object of Humbert's affection. Um, she has a journey as well that I felt like we took with her um, that I found very mesmerizing. Um, at first I started off feeling one way about Lolita and then I ended up feeling completely different. Um, and then the final character that I felt was very important was Quilty. Um, it took me a long time to actually realize who Quilty was. Um, it took me reading and rereading and then reading again what I thought was one thing and then was told something else by a website. <laughs> so, um, I just thought that he was very interesting once I finally grasped who this character was. Um, so besides those three characters, um, I also wanted to address the importance of the use of of language that um, the author used throughout the story. Although the content is very disturbing, um, the way it is written, it appeals to so many people. I've looked up articles and videos of just people raving about the story and how they feel the same way I do in the sense that you almost feel like you shouldn't be feeling this way about a writing. Um, but the way that it is written is beautiful and because of that um, like I said I would read it again um, the story is written from Humbert's perspective which I actually really like as well um, just being able to delve into one of the the characters perspectives and kind of get into his own world into his own head um, they a lot of people would portray Humbert as a protagonist and at first I got really upset about that because for me a protagonist is a hero of some sorts um, but when I read read this book and then realized I don't know that the protagonist is, is is in a different way in this book and I think that um, in a sense with the writing you can almost see Humbert as a not a hero but a a good person um, it, it in a strange, odd way. Um, one of the quotes that I feel like was beautifully written and one of the reasons why I really did like the story um, is this one. Um, it's from part one of the story 
and um, it says, I recall certain moments, let us call from icebergs in paradise, when after having had my fill of her, after fabulous insane exertions that left me limp and azure, bar and azure barred, I would gather her in my arms with, at last, a mute moan of human tenderness, her skin glistening in the neon light coming from the paved court through the slits in the blind, her soot-black lashes matted, her grave ga gray eyes more vacant than ever, for all the world a little patient, still in the confusion of a drug after a major operation. And the tenderness would deepen to shame and despair, and I would lull and rock my lone, little, my lone light Lolita in my marble arms, and moan in her warm hair, and caress her at random, and mutely ask her blessing, and at the peak of this human agonized selfless tenderness, with my soul actually hanging around her naked body and ready to repent. All at once, ironically, horribly, lust would swell again, and, oh no, Lolita would say with a sigh to heaven, and the next moment, the tenderness and the azure, all would be shattered. Um, and this might be in part two. I think I, I might have made that mistake. Um, the reason this quote for me is um, one of the most powerful is because I feel like it encompasses everything that Humber is in this in this one paragraph and how he feels about Lolita. Um, he is absolutely infatuated with this young girl and loves her in a deep way and finds her amazing and just um, intoxicating. And he he knows at this, in this quote, you can see that he, he understands that it is painful for her, um, but he can't really resist his, his, his feelings and his draw and his, honestly, his sickness. Um, and I think that these words really encompass the feeling of the entire book um, because you want to think that this paragraph is disgusting because he is describing these things about a girl, um, a child, but he, at the same time, is describing something that is so beautiful and that's something that I think that all of us want, if not have had. Um, so if you take those separately, uh, you can either take the book as, I think, absolutely horrible, or you can take it as a beautiful masterpiece. Um, so aside from um, that paragraph, which I feel like kind of introduces what I think about this story, um, the biggest part that I found interesting were the development of the characters and um, the lack of reality that all three of the characters kind of portrayed. I'm going to kind of break down each character the way that I, I felt like the story evolve them. Um, so first I'm going to start with Lolita. When I first started reading this story, um, Lolita, she has an attitude in the beginning, a normal preteen. Um, she gives her mom trouble and is a normal girl for her age. Um, and in the beginning when I found that she was teasing and flirting with Humbert, um, I was very disturbed and I thought that she didn't realize the consequences that could come from this. Obviously, when you're a young girl, you don't, uh, you don't, I guess you don't think that these things will, will lead to anything or that you, you might not even notice you're doing it. But for Lolita, she felt like it was, um, I think a, a way of, of manipulating somebody. Um, and, but f for her, it opened this door, um, that changed her life forever. And, uh, this, these are one of the quotes that I feel like um, also really encompassed who Lolita was and her relationship with Humber and how, yes, her circumstances were very, very wrong and she shouldn't have had to deal with what she had to deal with. But at the same time, um, the way that the author portrayed Lolita was in a way that you could, you could almost understand where she was, she kind of opened that door. Um, and then dealt with the consequences that, that came from it. Um, the passages from, it's page 112 in part one. Um, it's from when Humbert just picked up Lolita from camp after her mother died, and she doesn't know mom's dead yet. Um, and the quote is, Lolita says, oh no, Humbert says, you know I missed you terribly, Lo. And Lolita says, I did not fact. I've been revoting, 
re revoltingly and faithful to you, but it does not matter one bit, because you've stopped caring for me anyway. Humbert says, why do you think I have ceased caring for you, Lo? And she says, well, you haven't kissed me yet, have you? Um, at no point should a child her age be saying this to an adult man, especially somebody that her mother had married at this point, and she knows this. Um, I think the, that this kind of opened this doorway for Humbert that justified his actions in a way. Um, and from here, Lolita just involves into a girl that becomes um, sheltered and puppet-like in the sense that she lives the life that Humbert intends for her to live and really nothing else. Um, she starts this journey with Humbert across across the country and because of this, no access to anybody time of her life, she, she just becomes accustomed to what Humbert creates as normal for her and for normal for her um, becomes being Humbert's lover and um, his world and nothing, she doesn't know anything else. Um, and the reason she she goes along with it, I think, for as long as she does, um, she doesn't realize, and Humbert creates this world where she she believes that she's alone besides anybody besides Humbert, and, and frankly she is. Her dad had died at a young age, um, her brother had died, and then her mom has now just passed, and so really the only person that Lolita has is Humbert, um, and to her at this naive time in her life that's that's really not enough for her to risk losing to to leave um and I think the biggest shift for Lolita up to this point because they're on the road for two years and I think the biggest shift is when Lolita starts um going to school when they kind of settle in this place and um Lolita kind of begins to see what a real child should be she comes into this world of dating and and whatnot and um in into a school that really encourages this um and she's seeing all this but at the same time she's still with Humbert at home who is holding these these lies over her head saying that she isn't going to be able to have anybody else that she's never going to amount to anything that she's going to be alone forever and um, Lolita believes these still, but her reality is changing a little bit. And one of the biggest quotes for, for this part, for me, is, um, <clears throat> on page 287. Um, but the awful point in that whole arrangement is this. It had become gradually clear to my conventional Lolita during our singular and bestial cohabitation that even the most miserable of family lives was better than the parody of incest, which, in the long run, was the best I could offer wife. Um, so for here, I think that, in, and throughout the story we find out, or during this part of the story, we see that Lolita sees, um, like, her, her friends being normal um, around their fathers, and being just what a child should be. Um, and I think this kind of triggers something in her head to the point where she she just uh, starts defying, I think, Humbert a little bit more. Um, and realizing that, that maybe she could get out and this could be her reality. Um, and I think that the play that... Uh, she is asked to be in is another big step for Lolita pulling away um, from Humbert and actually pulling away from Humbert and towards Quilty, um, who actually is the writer of the play. Um, and I think this is uh, what leads her to ultimately, obviously, leave um, Humbert. But we never... I think the biggest thing is we never know if the escape for Lolita, um, after she gets sick and she's in the hospital and Quilty comes get her, comes and gets her. I don't, we don't know if, or I don't know personally if Lolita had planned this or if this was just Lolita's way of 
taking refuge in Quilty, who was also somebody far older than her and a pedophile. I don't know. My theory is that she found refuge in somebody that was similar to Humbert. Um, cause it says in the story that they are very similar and for her, she found Quilty appealing and not, um, scary or, or as if Humber is, you know, Quilty isn't going to hold her hostage in a sense. Um, or that's what Lolita thought at least. So whether it be that Quilty convinced her to do this or if Lolita convinced Quilty to do this, I, I do not know. But um, regardless, the second trip occurs across the United States. And um, this is this is planned instead of by Humbert, but by Lolita, who eventually um, ends up ex escaping after the hospital. And across this trip, I feel like we eventually find that, that they are being followed and and Lolita tries to make Humbert not catch onto the trail and um, changes the license plate number that Humbert finds. And um, she just tries to make it so that um, she can really be, be free. And I think that at this point when Lolita decides to do this, she is deciding that she can have a different life. Um, but to her, a different life is still essentially the same life. And this is what is really sad to me. Um, the whole time you're reading this book, I, I feel like personally I go up and down with Lolita. Like, I like her a lot. Um, but at the same time, I feel like she kind of made her bed, so she needs to lay at, in it. And I think that that's what the author really wanted to do. Um, trying to make it so that we, we're not quite sure how to feel about her until we really know. And um, at this point in the story, I really knew how I felt about Lolita. I, I pitied her, and I wanted her to be free. But at the same time, this whole quilty thing just made me very upset because to her, her reality was, was being with Humbert and this pedophile life... Um, living as a prisoner was all she knew. So when Quilty came along and wanted the same thing for her, she took it and ran because it was the same yet different. So it was comfortable to her. Um, so that's kind of Lolita in a nutshell for me. And then at the end of the story, um, the fact that she is free of Quilty and is married and is only 17 and pregnant. Um, she's just very broken, I think looking for, for love in whatever way she can. And um, she's just broken, and her... I don't know that she will ever be this the, a normal person. Um, not to say anything's really normal, but for Lolita, this is, this is who she is. And um, sadly, that is, I think, a result of both Humber and Quilty um, defining who she is instead of Lolita defining who she is. Um... So another big character, obviously, is Humbert. And Humbert's history with mental illness, I feel like we never really know what this is. Um, on page 32, we hear, there's a quote that says, a, dread, a dreadful breakdown sent me to a sanitarium for more than a year. I went back to my work, only to be hospitalized again. So we know that he's been hospitalized multiple times, but we don't really know why. Um, and I don't... I, I, I think that the author puts this information in because we want to know that he is not necessarily a stable guy. And I think that the fact that he is um, attracted to young women, that that in itself tells us that he's not stable and that he does not think in the right mindset of a grown man. But at the same time, we see that there is also something stemming from, from that whole situation that's deeper. Um, so Humber, at first he only fantasizes about Lolita, and this is something that he does with all young women. It's only a fantasy. Um, I don't think that he ever expects to actually act upon it in a way that he, he does with Lolita. Um, he never intended to, to take her innocence away or to make her feel used or, or gross or anything like that. Um, but like I said before, Lolita opened this door with Humber, and... I believe that if she was not 
like that if she was more aware of what the consequences could have possibly have been that Humbert, what this whole story obviously wouldn't have happened. Um, so although Humbert is to blame, I do think that Lolita did not help. Um, so from here, from this door being opened, Humbert was able to take Lolita, this little girl, away from her reality, like I had mentioned before, and create this reality for her that just encompassed um, sex and games and lies and manipulation. Um, but the way that it was written, you don't necessarily see that all of these negative words are within these the context of the story. Um, well, he becomes upset, obsessed and shelters Lolita more in fear of, of losing her. And when Lolita begins to go to school and does this play and begins to have friends her own age, she realizes that his suspicions of losing her are becoming reality. And the second road trip is something that also really, I think, sparks his fear and um, realizes it to be true, obviously, in the end when Lolita does leave. But because of this paranoia, he becomes even more controlling of Lolita. Um, and then once Lolita is taken, Humbert continues to be obsessed with Lolita in a way where he actually just devotes his life to finding her. Um, he finds clues that were left by Quilty, who he doesn't know is Quilty. Um, and just continuously justifies his actions um, of loving Lolita, he goes back and forth saying that he, he knows it was not right to take her innocence, but at the same time, the way he portrays it, and because the story is from Humbert's perspective, we don't necessarily find it wrong, I would say, and that's what, the, what makes the novel so hard to read. Um, I, Humbert believes that he is a different kind of pedophile um, because he loved Lolita and he found the act of loving Lolita and being so enthralled with this this girl um, I think a part of his art and his art was writing and he used Lolita and his experience with Lolita and everything involved around it to create this masterpiece that we are reading and this um, this story is his way of expressing who he is um, in the way that I think he wants to portray it, in the sense that he doesn't necessarily think he is bad, like I said, and he thinks that his actions are justified. So him writing this story in this beautiful way is for us to realize that his actions and his, his justifications are normal to him. When he finds Lolita... He, he's, um, after years and years of searching and, and finding out where she is finally and that she's married and pregnant, he is actually thinking that asking her to come with him is a possibility and that she might say yes. Um, I think that he knows that she's going to say no and I think that he realizes the brokenness that he has encompassed in this girl. But at the same time, he's convinced that who he is isn't necessarily bad. So I think that maybe he might have asked these things in hopes that his dream would come true and that Lolita would leave with him and live this life that he could never imagine. And the fact that he still loves Lolita when she's 17 does kind of say something. Um, she is no longer an infant and Humber is solely attracted to them. He he only is attracted to these these girls from the ages of 9 to 12, and once they get older than that, they are no longer appealing to him. And the fact that he finds Lolita at the age of 17 when she is pregnant and married and still loves her just as much um, says, I think, that he did really care about her um, and that, yes, him being a pedophile is wrong and disgusting, but at the same time, his love was genuine and... Um, I think that that being the case, it just is what makes the story so beautiful in a way. Lola, there's a point where Lolita, um, says on page 278, 
Um, the quote is, she groped for words. I supplied them mentally. He broke my heart. You merely broke my life. Um, for me, that's, that's my favorite passage in the whole entire thing. Um, the fact that Lolita did choose to go with Quilty, I think, in a way, um, and, and went from one situation to another that was very similar, she found Quilty desirable in a way that she did not find Humbert desirable, and she saw Humbert as a, as a, as an evil person who broke her life. Um, she will never be the same. She, I think she now realizes that the fact that she did go from Humbert to Quilty was not okay, and that Humbert broke the life causing her to want to do this, and for her to think that was normal, and for her to look for the love of a man like Quilty, um, and, which is why she, he broke her life, and for Quilty to break her heart in a way that, I mean, a young girl could fall in love with a star, and, um, get, get him, and, in a sense, I mean, she thought that love was, was what Humbert had for her, even though she didn't feel the same way for him, um, that was normal to her. Um, ultimately, Humbert kills Quilty, um, because of his jealousy and anger towards him, um, thinking about his crimes affecting Lolita more than his own. So he thought that, I think that Humbert thought that Quilty, um, broke her more. Although he realizes he broke her, he thinks that in his own head that Quilty's actions were more wrong than his own actions. And even though they were not, um, in any way, I don't think much different, um, he in his head thinks that Quilty was solely about sex and solely about using somebody for for this and and his ability to love Lolita the way he does was um, classified him into a different category that we don't get to know as much but I do think is very important in the book is Quilty. Um, it took me a long time to realize that Quilty was kind of Humbert's doppelganger even though it was mentioned throughout the book that Quilty did um, Quilty and Humbert resembled each other a lot. Um, Humbert thinks that he looks like his cousin, um, or maybe his uncle, his relative, Trip, um, but doesn't associate him with himself, which I think is, is kind of funny because he, I think he finds jealousy in this man. Um, Quilty is the playwright that Lolita has a crush on and hangs posters up in her room, um, and actually ends up writing the play that Lolita is in at the school, and which isn't by coincidence, I don't think. Um, so Quilty somehow establishes himself into this life, and he himself is also obsessed with Lolita from a distance. Um, I think that the author wanted to portray Quilty in a way that Quilty is Humbert, but in an evil way. Um, that's why they, they connect them in, like, this doppelganger form. And he somehow pops up throughout the story. Um, as they are traveling the second time, he becomes more more prominent in the sense that he begins to follow them and um, eventually, obviously, leads to taking Lolita from the hospital and from Humbert. Um, he does pornography and tries to get... Lolita involved, but Lolita loves him and does not want to be involved in something like this, so, um, ultimately Lolita ends up leaving, and I think that we just see from Quilty, and I think that what is supposed to be portrayed by him <clears throat> is that he represents the evil, um, within the story, although he is partaking in the things that Humbert does as well. Um, he focuses on his form of art, which for Quilty is, um, is film. So to him, sex and porn, this is his art. Um, well, Humbert justifies himself in writing, so I think that that also kind of coincides. Um, I think that overall, 
This story is, like I said, intense. Um, to read it is very emotional and takes you on a journey that you don't expect to, through these characters. Um, it's just kind of amazing that this this concept of of two pedophiles, really, Quilty and Humbert, obsession obsession over this one girl, Lolita, and the life that Lolita is forced to live and the life that she lives because of all of these things and the reality that she knows that this can be written in a book in which people pick up on purpose because they want to read something and once they pick it up they they don't put it down because it's disgusting but instead they they can't stop reading it because it is so beautifully written that you don't realize what you're reading until you're actually done reading it um are incredibly important and for me when I read a story I like to put myself into the story as if I am a part of it um and and with each character and in a sense getting to know them on this different level and for me that's what I felt like I did with with each of these characters Lolita, Humbert, and, and Quilty and like I said it took me a little while to grasp who Quilty was and and um what he really looked like but I think that once I realized what the story was about as a whole. Um, I really did appreciate how the author portrayed each character. Reading Lolita and that Tehran was a way, I think, to um, conclude everything that I read and to this, this way of relating it to real people. Um, I think that the journey with these ladies coming from oppression and a time where they are forced to cover their heads and to dress completely covered, um, not only because of their religion, but because they are literally forced to by law, um, is, is a way to portray Lolita in a way. Um, and I think that these ladies reading this book is... Is it, is it allows for them to connect um, to Lolita in a different way. And I think that, although I know they, they go in a deeper level, um, this is a, a very evident connection. Um, one of the passages from the book um, I'm going to read right now, or the chapter rather, it says, These girls, my girls, had both a real history and a fabricated one. Although they came from very different backgrounds, the regime that ruled them had tried to make their personal identities and histories irrelevant. They were never free of the regime's definition of them as Muslim women. Whoever we were, and it was not really important what religion we belonged to, whether we wished to wear the veil or not, whether we observed certain religious norms or not, we had become the figment of someone else's dreams. A stern Ayatollah, a self-proclaimed philosopher, king, had come to rule our land. He had come in the name of a past, a past that he claimed had been stolen from him, and he knew wanted to recreate us in the image of that illustri, illus, illusory past. Was it any consolation, and did we even wish to remember that what he did to us was what we allowed him to? Um, I think that this really goes back to the point that I made about Lolita being... Um, she kind of opened that door for Humbert, um, especially the line that says, and any consolation, and did we even wish to remember that what he did to us was what we allowed him to? Um, essentially, Humbert allowed, or Lolita allowed Humbert to, to take advantage of her because she opened this door. I don't know that if Humbert, that Humbert would have ever acted on his, his feelings or if he would have just admired from a distance like he intended um without Lolita allowing him to be what he is and because of that Lolita was formed into um this person that wasn't really her um she didn't have a real history like this says but a fabricated one um and I think that's what these girls really are portraying within this chapter. Um, another passage that I thought was really, really important in this chapter is, um, Take Lolita. This was a story of a 12-year-old girl who had nowhere to go. 
Humbert had tried to turn her into his fantasy, into his dead love, and he had destroyed her. The desperate truth of Lolita's story is not the rave of a 12-year-old by a dirty old man, but the confiscation of one individual's life by another. We don't know that Lolita would have become if Humbert had not engulfed her. Yet the novel, the finished work, is hopeful, beautiful even. A defense not just of beautiful, but of life. Not of beauty, but of life. Ordinary, everyday life. All the normal pleasures that Lolita, like Yasi, was deprived of. Um, this was referring to one of the girls that uh, lived a, lived an incredibly um, deprived life. Uh, I don't, I think that, like this passage says, that this, we don't know exactly what Lolita would have lived to be um, if Humbert hadn't created her the way she was. And because we don't know this, we are able to connect um, and to find appreciation within the writing um, to portray this this sense of of loss and of um, of sadness really um, this life that is stolen from Lolita and I think that reading Lolita and Tehran um, really links this this concept of having a life that is stolen from them um, with these women that are that are oppressed in their everyday lives and cannot do things because of the law or because a man tells her not to and essentially Lolita cannot do the same because of Humbert. Um, so I think that re reading Lolita and Tehran really helped connect the two um, in a deeper way and I think that it was very beneficial as well. Um, overall, surprisingly, I really love the story. Um, I hope that this analysis made sense. Um, this is just kind of how my brain works. When it comes to analyzing things, um, saying it out loud was a little bit more difficult because I think that my brain tends to be a little bit more ADD, and when I write, I can I can kind of clear that up a little bit. But um, I surprisingly did enjoy the book, and I probably will read it again. So I feel like overall, this is a great read, and. Um, I was able to analyze it in a way that I did not expect, to be honest, um, and draw things from it that I didn't expect to draw, um, and to feel differently about the characters than I thought I would. Um, so, yeah, that's Lolita. <laughs>